we're going to live up to our name today. The system we're looking at is a bit substantial for our Bijou workbench, so join me on the floor for something very beige indeed. It's perhaps difficult to imagine a more boxy, beigey, beige box. I mean, this is an HP 1000A 600+. They started building this model in 1983. This actual machine dates from the first half of 1984. It's a mini computer designed for real-time and industrial applications. The home hobbyist might think of it as sort of an Arduino-y thing. It was intended to control lab instruments or industrial systems. HP's blurb at the time lists uh, monitoring of power distribution or telecommunication networks, uh, control of orbiting satellites, monitoring and control of temperature, lighting, and power consumption in buildings, automatic testing, lab automation. It really, it's just kind of an open-ended laundry list. Just don't add gaming unless you really mean text-based multi-user dungeons. The 1000s come from a family of systems that served HP as a general compute platform. In fact, thanks to its heritage, it uses a time-sharing capable operating system called RTE, or the Real-Time Executive. There was a shared family of peripherals, some used across compute families, and a mix of form factors. You could have various racked enclosures, along with our A600, which can be racked, here are two other types, but you could also get a desktop enclosure. Our example's enclosure style is being used here as a desk side machine. They called this a Micro 1000 or a 14 slot enclosure. The actual compute part is what makes it one particular model or another. The rest is just interface capacity. This box as it's configured today is mostly dead air. In front you have a fan tray, filter tray, and a power supply. You could put powered devices in this base space, although external devices seem to have been the norm. Then around back you have the real compute part. The actual computer is basically this CPU card and some minimal memory subsystem. At the time you could buy this completely separately and create your own system. This particular machine has a minimal setup. It's just the base memory controller with 512 kilobytes. These other two cards are the simplest I.O. system that you might use. The first is an external bus controller. It uses the HP Interface Bus Standard, or HPIB. That's an 8-bit duplex parallel bus capable of a maximum transfer rate of just under a megabyte per second. Now for comparison, that's getting on for the speed of USB 1, which could manage about 1.5 megabytes, or 12 megabits. The overall system bus can manage a little bit over 4 megabytes a second. This other card is a serial interface. As you might have guessed, that gets used to give us a basic serial console. From this foundation, you can fill up the rest of these slots with additional bus controllers for more high and low speed devices, or you might add dedicated interfaces designed for specific tasks. Here's a closer look at the CPU itself. The system clock is about 4.4 megahertz. If you look at the contemporary whetstone benchmarks, it's more than twice as fast as the Intel 286. It had native floating point processing for a start, but in comparison to the 32-bit 386, it's a fraction of the performance. Later processor iterations on this platform jacked up the speed by a factor of 7 before the end of the series in about 1991. The early HP computers were implemented in small-scale integration components. Being much later, this machine takes advantage of a bit slice processor, which uses large-scale integration. AMD, indeed that one, had the AM2900 series of bit slice CPU components. Their design separated the ALU and control functions. The ALU is 4 bits per chip, but you could use multiple chips to create an arbitrary width parallel CPU. You want 8 bits? Okay, use 2. You want 32 bits? Use 8. Most of the implementations I've personally seen use four ALUs for a 16-bit architecture, as this machine does. That includes the ICL Three Rivers Perk workstation and some of the PDP-11s. On this board, the ALU is this set of chips. You might wonder how you can implement a completely different system architecture, like a PDP-11 and this HP-1000, with the same basic chips. The answer is microcode. They're controlled by this chip, an AM2910, which is a microprogram sequencer, and these PROMs here are the microcode. 
the machine still supports the same basic instruction set used on the 2116, even though it's some 17 years on from that predecessor. It does it by mapping between control signals to relevant micro-instructions. Each assembler instruction becomes a little program run in microcode. Each card below the processor, or in this case beside the processor, is addressed using an ID, and that's set on the dip switches. However, the priority of the card's interrupt gets determined by the actual slot it's in. The further from the CPU you get, the lower the priority. In earlier family members, both the card ID and interrupt priority were encoded by bus position alone. Notice there are no D-shell or any other kind of familiar port connectors on the system? Well, that's not just something that's missing. HP used direct edge connector cabling throughout the life of this family of computers, and it was also common on the early 3000 series machines as well. So to connect up, you need to buy or build proprietary cables well, like these. In our next video, we'll go online with RTE, and we'll get a feel for what it's actually like to use the system. Hope you enjoyed this little introduction to an admittedly pretty obscure compute platform. Give us a like if you did, and subscribe and enable notifications to catch the next part of this story. Thanks for watching.